One of the best parts of travel is the food, visiting local restaurants, grabbing street food, and immersing yourself in the culture. Well, if you keep kosher, that's rarely an option. As Orthodox religious Jews who keep kosher, when planning a trip or vacation, we always have to think about kosher food and how we'll accommodate our dietary restrictions. Where we currently live, there are plenty of kosher grocery stores, restaurants, takeout places, and the full extent of kosher food availability. When going on vacation to places like Miami, Florida, or even Cancun, Mexico, there are kosher groceries and restaurants available there. A lot of countries around the world and states in America have kosher food available, but more remote and exotic destinations have no kosher food at all. And so when planning a trip to such a place, you need to plan ahead, bring the right food and cooking equipment sometimes as well, depending on what kinds of foods you buy, the meals you plan to make, and the kind of trip that it is. The way we plan food for a backpacking trip will be very different than camping or even a hotel stay. Each trip has different kinds of needs for kosher food. Last month, we took a trip to West Virginia with our friends rented an Airbnb to relax and enjoy the beautiful nature and hang out together with our babies. So in this video, I'm going to share with you how we kept kosher on vacation in terms of planning, shopping, and cooking during our week-long stay. So let's start at the beginning. Okay, we just parked at Evergreen Kosher Market to go get some uh, meat for our trip. I have a loose list on my phone of what we need but I'm pretty much gonna be figuring it out as I'm looking at what's available so let's go see what there is it was super busy in there and it took forever but we got everything we needed. Oh, it's fogging up. It's getting foggy. It was really cold in there and it's really hot and humid out here, so I think I'll stop now. So what does kosher even mean? Let me give you a quick crash course. Kosher means that the food is allowed to be eaten in accordance with Jewish law. Most food is kosher. Basically everything is kosher unless it becomes not kosher. There are certain animals that are not kosher like pork, insects, shellfish, and more. And there are kosher animals that are kosher like beef, chicken, and fish. Although they need to be slaughtered according to Jewish law. Additionally, any mixture of meat and dairy products combined are not kosher even if both separately are kosher. Grape juice and wine products that were not processed under kosher supervision are not kosher and fruits and vegetables can also become complicated because we cannot eat insects. So we either need to clean them before eating or some are pretty impossible to clean. Say hi! <laughs> You're just the best girl! and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hi, my name is Nahama and this is my husband Yehuda. We are currently on a road trip to West Virginia, all the way from Lakewood, New Jersey to, what's the town in West Virginia? I believe it's Hedgesville. Hedgesville, West Virginia, just for your information. Yeah. And this video is gonna be all about how we keep kosher in a place that doesn't have any kosher grocery stores, restaurants, anything like that. So we're totally gonna be on our own. We brought a lot of stuff from Lakewood and we're also just gonna be buying some things in like the local Walmart and we wanna bring you along the journey and show you guys exactly what we're bringing with us, what we're buying locally and how we plan to make this an amazing week of yummy food despite the fact that there's no like local availability. It's gonna be gourmet, it's gonna be good. It's gonna be fun. Yeah. Anything else we should add? Um, so I got a um, bunch of meat and chicken. Yum. Yeah, to <laughs> I freeze. I love meat the and chicken. It's literally my favorite. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, so I froze that before the trip and. Um, he did the big shopping. Yeah, 
made sure I estimated what we would need, we froze it, and now we have it all in a cooler in the trunk, and um, I guess we'll show you that soon, what we got. Yeah, as we like bring the stuff into our Airbnb, like we could show you guys what we actually bought beforehand and packed in the cooler, and then as we go shopping, we'll also bring you along you know, and then towards the end, I guess we'll just give like a wrap up of exactly like what happened throughout the week with food, what we ended up doing, um, just so that you guys know if you're planning on taking a trip and you keep kosher, um, hopefully this could help you out. Right, if you don't already know, but maybe there'll be something you didn't think of before. And if you haven't done something like this before, you don't necessarily keep kosher and you wanna see what it's like, we'll show you. Stay tuned and we will take you along with us. She's got her food, and we're going to get out. How do you know if something is kosher? So either it's inherently kosher and not contaminated by something non-kosher, or if it's packaged processed foods, there are organizations that oversee and certify food companies to ensure their products are supervised and done properly according to kosher standards. Each organization has their own symbol that represents the product is kosher. It's printed on the product label for the consumer to see. The reason these organizations exist for packaged kosher food is because even products that are kosher can become not kosher during during production. Therefore, all processed food needs a certification to be considered kosher and trusted by the consumer. It's unlikely or impossible to find kosher meat and cheese anywhere other than a very populated religious town or city. So we brought that from home. However, you can get other kinds of kosher food at places like Target, Walmart, Trader Joe's, etc. Although they aren't necessarily stocked with a variety of kosher food in locations that don't have a Jewish population. So it's kind of a catch-22. There are always basics you can find at Walmart like pasta, rice, canned goods, and of course fruit and veggies, bread, etc. that will be available at any Walmart or Target location. So here we are doing our big shopping. So we're here at our Airbnb. We just put the babies down and we're trying to unpack and get everything settled. So. We're going to be unpacking all of this stuff from the Walmart trip and then also just like everything from the cooler. So we'll show you guys once we get that done. Now that we have all of the Walmart stuff put away, it's time to do the cooler. Here we have we all of our uh, stuff from the kosher groceries in Lakewood, New Jersey. It's a couple of days later and I want to show you exactly what we got like pretty much doing a tour or a haul of the groceries and stuff that we got from Walmart and also that we brought from home. Just to show you the different food items that we brought with us versus what we bought here and how that's completely rounded out to be enough for what we need to eat here. So let's start with this table. <laughs> this is the snack unhealthy situation. We have Oreos, brownies, glazed donut holes, Entenmann's, chocolate donuts, Bananas, uh, bananas so and stuff, unhealthy. some Krispy Kreme donuts on the table over there, but yeah. We also have this Betty Crocker pizza maker, which is the very, very integral key thing that we have in order to make all different kinds of things in here, not just pizza, which we didn't make pizza yet, but we're gonna use it for really everything. So that's that station right over here. This is some K-Cups that we brought, but really it doesn't matter. Coffee does not need to be kosher if it's unflavored. If it is flavored or has other things in it, it has to be kosher, but we just brought this one because we like the half-calf. Over here on the windowsill, we just put some of the stuff we bought, like parchment paper, aluminum foil, Ziploc bags, what happens to be she does have here in the Airbnb. Some Ziploc bags here that we've been using as well. Dishwasher, we're not 
touching the sink. I haven't really been putting things inside the sink directly because this sink is trafe. The sink is not kosher. I wouldn't want to put and wash dishes and have everything sitting in here, especially in hot water, um, in the sink itself. So when we've had dirty dishes, we've just kept it like right over here and then we've used the sink just like this, you know, and then dried it. The only thing we've been putting on this rack is the baby bottles. I really wouldn't put my own dishes on here. It's just for the baby. We anyway wash things and you know, she has milk and then she eats chicken. So it's like not really applicable for her. And also this is really only where clean dishes go. So we're just using that to put the bottles. Yehuda's saying he would put the pot here to dry too. I'm not sure. I don't know, it makes me nervous that it's not like... Doesn't make me nervous. It's not ours. Okay, moving on to this area right here. We only use the scissors from here. These are our Not pots. for food, we just I use know, the scissors as scissors. Packages, but this is our stack of pots. The pots that they have from the Airbnb are lining this wall and we are not using any of these. These are just for show here. We're only using this stacker pots that we brought. Um, here are some other random stuff we have, like tomatoes, bars of chocolate. We actually were putting them on the windowsill before, but then they were melting, so that's that. Up here is the shelf that we use just to put the stuff that we bought from Walmart. So we have olive oil spray, spices, beans for the barbecue, some sauces, more spices, uh, marinara sauce in the back, tahina for Shabbos. They had those bowls and stuff also on that shelf, but we just moved it over and kind of used it as a pantry for ourselves. The stove top, we're allowed to use the stove top. We don't use the oven, even though technically if you would want to burn it out and be able to use it for kosher cooking, you would be able to do that somehow. We just didn't fi like find out about it. And we we are totally fine just using the stove top for cooking and using the Betty Crocker pizza maker. We also have a grill that we brought that we're going to be using as well. So with those three, that just rounds out everything that we need. Um, moving on, this is formula and stuff for the other baby that's with us, but moving on to this area. <laughs> it keeps opening whenever I walk by. We got some pasta, some cereals, some extra hot cups here. We have Shana's Mike and Ike's. <laughs> Um, two different kinds of teas that we didn't even open yet. Um, and graham crackers for s'mores. Where's our marshmallows? Oh, right there. We have assorted cutlery here that's plastic, so we're not using, again, any of the stuff from the Airbnb. We have our own here with the plastic cutlery, the paper plates and bowls. We bought some aluminum pans here and also bought these kosher marshmallows from Trader Joe's back at home. There is no Trader Joe's here, at least locally. Um, and again, for people who are saying that Trader Joe's has kosher meats or um, snacks, whatever, they do have some, but especially in, they really only have in the kosher communities, like in the big communities, Trader Joe's, that's like, in a place like this, would not have kosher meat anyway. We have some chips, we have some microwave popcorn that's kosher, everything here, everything that we get in Walmart has to have some kind of kosher symbol. Um, I can put up a list, but the most common one is this OUD right here. The D is for dairy, so that's just an extra, but really this OU means that it is kosher, Orthodox Union approved. Right, there's another one like this. This is from the CRC. They're based out of Chicago, and each kosher organization has some symbol that lets you know that this item is kosher, this item is approved by a certain set of people that we have to trust. So some people go by certain symbols and some people don't. Let's show you all the fridge and freezer stuff. So this is what we have here. I'll start from the door. We have our eggs. We have mayo, ketchup, sun-dried tomatoes because Yehuda cannot live without them for some reason. <laughs> we have our marinara sauce. We've got some water, half and half, two different kinds of yogurts. We have, let's start here at the bottom half a cucumber because we used it last night. We got some carrots, some blueberries. Here we have the cheese we got also from home. Cheddar and mozzarella and just mozzarella. We've got a bunch of drinks like for an iced teas. We have milk here, almond milk. We have wine that we brought from home because we definitely can't drink any wine here. Wine is even trickier for Kashras. Yeah, our Airbnb hosts tried to give us and they were so sweet but we couldn't take it. We got some pickles. Is this beer? I brought beer. Another wine. We have some grape juice here in the back for Shabbos Kiddush, and we brought that from home. We got some greens, and I've been checking them. So, what we do is that if they're freshly washed and 
quote unquote ready to eat, I just check them in the light and look on both sides to see if it has any bugs or anything that I can spot. But if it doesn't, then you can eat it. This is leftover spaghetti from last night. We have our ginger ale, Coke. This is a spelt muffin I still didn't eat that my mother made. Uh, this is hummus, some cookie dough that we want to actually bake. We're going to bake them in the Betty Crocker. It's going to be really fun. And also we can eat it plain, as I do. That all these came are in not the... ours, right? Yeah, that's just everything that came. Okay, so they put some creamers out. I don't think these are even kosher. I think they are. Actually, these are. Yeah. Oh, you do. You know, sometimes, like, the... is it not this brand? Mostly they are. It's, a, it's possible not coffee to. Coffee meat? Every time I go to a hotel, they're never kosher. But this one is? Yeah. I think oh. they are usually. No, I remember having issues with creamer. And okay. they weren't kosher. I hear you. Um, so that's everything in the fridge. And let's move on to the freezer. Um, we actually had some chick patties that we ate the other day. And these are chicken wings and chicken nuggets. Um, maybe I will take over from here and you show them everything in the freezer since you're the one who bought everything. Because your hands are too cold. <laughs> Yehuda's the one that bought everything, so I think it makes sense for him to show you exactly what we got. And these are all stuff that we bought in Lakewood in the kosher grocery and packed it up here in this cooler. London broil. Nice. Take out for the barbecue tonight, anyway. Let's see. Swiss steaks. More Swiss steaks. Chicken. I bought a giant thing, so I split it into two packs so we can defrost them at different times. One nice. for Shabbos, one for maybe one night. At this rate, we're gonna have extra. Nice thing of ground beef. One more ground beef. Pargy oat, which is baby chicken. Small things of baby back ribs. You're fancy. <laughs> Ribs? Are you serious? When in West Virginia. <laughs> Another thing in the chicken that I said. And that's all for the meat. So I'm going to just put this back in. Okay, we'll maybe take out what we need um, for tonight for the barbecue well, anyway. But I just want to show first what's in the freezer. We got challah because you can get bread in the stores here, but usually they sell everything sliced and challah needs to be whole and not cut yet. Um, right. Until we cut for it. For Shabbos. So. so we brought a couple challahs in here and then some rolls. And then... It's hard to find green bean. It has to be grown in a greenhouse, so you don't have to worry about checking it, which is really hard um, for bugs. So I just brought a thing from home we had in our freezer, so we can have some Yeah, dark. so any like frozen veggies and things like that, that would be specific to um, making sure that there's no bugs in it, we would really need it to be from home. So we brought that with us. And we got- We got an ice cream. Butter pecan ice cream. Awesome, so what that's really all the freezer stuff. We're gonna have a barbecue tonight. What are we and eating? I would say burgers and chicken. Burgers and chicken? <laughs> Do we not have enough? I don't know, I have to think about what we're having every night. All right. But well, we gotta do that so we can defrost it for cooking later. So that is the kitchen tour, all the food and everything. And when we grill, we'll show you guys that we have like this mini grill with propane and we just grill it up. We'll probably put it on the porch outside and eat on the balcony right there. So, yep. Okay, it is question and answer time. It is like two months later. We filmed the video in August and right now it's October. So anyway, we're gonna do them rapid fire. Just a bunch of quick questions some of them are repetitive so i'm just consolidating them into a few like core questions that hopefully will be helpful to you i'm going to start with the most general question and that is what is your criteria for using a kitchen that you know isn't kosher and pretty much a similar question also was like how do you use a non-kosher kitchen so i'm gonna have my husband start because i feel like he's better at this stuff got it what's the question <laughs> basically a non how do you use a non-kosher kitchen mm-hmm well First off, you can't use any of the metal, silverware, or even plastic, really any of the utensils, unless they're disposable and haven't been used before. That's all off limits. And you cannot use any of the dishes, any of the cookware, any of the sponges for cleaning. So how do you use the kitchen? Rapid fire. Well, you can put things in the fridge. The fridge is fine. You could. <laughs> what else is fine? Um, you can't use the oven, but you could use the stove top. Um, be careful though, this because if any, actual food touches the stove top then you have a problem because I'm sure non-kosher food has fallen on there or we assume that's the case and you can't um, 
it becomes non-kosher if any actual food touches that. Same thing uh, with the countertops. I'd be careful um, anything that's falling on the counters unless you clean them really well. Um, or some would probably say you have to kosher them and just don't, or cover them and don't use any. Yeah, so pretty much when using a non-kosher kitchen, you need to bring everything yourself except for like the actual appliances like you can use um the stovetop again and the oven someone else asked also like do you use the airbnb's oven to cook if so how do you do it in terms of kosherous tell me what you think but i think it's just very hard to use an oven like i i don't know if you would have to like burn it out or what you would have to do yeah, we would have are, to there, find out no there are protocols to follow yeah you would want to find out it, i think it pretty much involves cleaning it out really well and then burning it out right so that's not something we were were interested in doing or had the time to or, or cared to, to. Yeah, we didn't need to. We brought our own portable grill for grilling outside and then we had uh, the pizza maker, which I'm sure exactly. we showcased. Yes, and we showcased that a lot and basically bringing your own stuff and not using the oven. Um, you can also use uh, the microwave and I'll show you, I'll insert clips here on how to kosher the microwave and show you like the instruction. But it pretty much is so simple. It involves putting a cup of water in the microwave for a few minutes and then you're able to use it. And even if you don't do that, you can put things in the microwave if you're if you cover it in some way um, but I just think it's so much easier to kosher it in that way it's very very simple and other than that plastic and just like disposable utensils or even just bringing a couple of key things from home it will be really helpful in a non-kosher kitchen same thing with the do you use pots or pans how do you make hot food so we definitely don't use theirs but if you want to we did bring a couple of pots but honestly we would have survived with just a grill or we would have survived with just the pizza maker like you can make it as simple as you want it to be but you definitely don't need pots and pans so we it's just nice to figured, make pasta yeah we're not flying so because we had you, could you also know put vegetables in them for sure you can also cook them in the pizza maker it's literally yeah amazing. But you have to put um parchment paper unless you want to clean it and it's much I think the pizza maker, if you're actually cooking directly in it, is harder to clean than a pan, which you can put in the sink. Yeah, but parchment paper is so easy. You just yeah, layer it. Yeah, but it doesn't cook the same. You don't get the. You don't have the same. Yeah, it's not the same as frying something in a pan. Like right? it's not going to taste the same. And but... I care about that. <laughs> so I guess it depends on what you care about. We did show a bunch of ways to make hot food, so hopefully that answers that question. It's more just like a comment. Like I feel like it's probably more difficult on a dairy-free diet, and I would say. Yes, but the same as in life. Like, I don't think it's more difficult on on keeping kosher on vacation because we didn't eat cheese all day. We didn't eat, like, there's so many things to make that are not dairy. Like, we had a lot of things. Yeah, we had, yeah, we had, a lot we had of more options to eat than we had nights and or days to exactly. eat. Exactly. We had way more food than needed, basically. And there's so many awesome options. And like I was saying, like, when we were in Walmart and we were picking up things for the house, it's like, just be adventurous with what you eat. Like, I know I'm very into health, but at the same time, like, on vacation, like, it's okay. You know, 80-20 kind of principle. It's okay to, like, explore, try new foods, like, eat some fun things you don't usually eat. There's so many options even that are dairy-free, again, and, like, just make sure they have a kosher symbol and all that. I'm more of a 50-50 principle. <laughs> How do we know which Starbucks are really kosher and which just says so? I don't drink OUD. Starbucks is a whole nother story, and I would suggest asking your own rabbi, like, what he thinks about Starbucks and how to tell if a drink is kosher. But it's possible if he doesn't know because some rabbis haven't checked in specifically and they may say to err on the side of caution exactly. and not drink there. But um, our Rav actually has looked into it in detail and he has a resource online as I'm sure we said. Uh, yeah, it makes me nervous to say, to tell other people like what no, to do or have, that things are okay. I definitely think you should ask and find out their, for yourself. Yeah, I was saying have your rabbi look at it. And if he's not, doesn't know, see what he thinks about that or have him get in touch. Or have him get in contact, habit. yeah. Um, right? Go to kosherstarbucks.com and check know. it out. Like, that's a great resource, and that's pretty much what I use um, to know if something's kosher and to know if something's dairy. Also, also you can ask. I feel like with dairy, the, they would tell you straight out. Like, people are allergic to dairy. So, um, if you want to, you know, if you want a kosher drink, but you just don't want OUD, um, which I'll put a little description here of what the difference is between OUD and, um, you know, other dairy, other forms of dairy that are strictly kosher. But yeah, just find out for yourself from a rabbi that you trust um, with when it comes to Starbucks and really many things. Everything, I'm saying. <laughs> right. Someone saying sugar and salt. Do you use anything from the house? Like, would we use sugar and salt from the house? If it looks clean and untouched and new, or even new, yeah, even well, if, if it's, it's not new, package, if it looks very, yeah, if the package. And There's you know, little we're, packets we're sure of what sugar. it is. Yeah, yeah, of course. If you know exactly you know, what it is, then you can sense. use it because 
sugar and salt are, you know, natural. But so. other spices you can't necessarily use. Um, if it's in a kosher package and it looks clean, if it's from a company that is certified kosher and the package is clean, it doesn't look like, you know, anything got in there, I would probably use it. Um, some people bait. might not. You can edit it. Um, just edit in between every space. Um, good luck with that though. <laughs> You're getting so good at it. Segwaying into our last question is pretty much how do you know what's kosher if something doesn't have a symbol? So again, going back to like the idea of if something is natural and it's clean and untouched and it's like a fruit, it's sugar, it's salt, it's a, what, a coffee. What are other examples? It's not not kosher. It's kosher. Right. Going back to our, the original description pretty much in the beginning of the video, I find also that the rabbi of the local area, if there is, if there's any kind of Jewish community or any kind of even community in the vicinity, like finding out from them or from a Chabad nearby, like what's kosher. Because I know that when I went to Greece, I found out like what's kosher even without a symbol, like in certain shops, like which brands. And so there's definitely more information that you can use to buy things in stores that don't necessarily have a kosher symbol but also when I was in Iceland there was really not much stuff there other than like Arizona and Ben and Jerry's which mm -hmm. I guess are imported and have um, a heksher a kosher symbol but like something like salmon um, with the skin on was like one of the only like fresh fish things we could get although it was a little more complicated than that but that's just because it's like an unmistakable um, <clears throat> fish it's the only one that looks like that that goes back into the all the fine details of what makes something kosher or not kosher and you have to learn that um, pretty well to be able to make decisions without asking. Yeah, or or you can just ask and I think that like there's so many options more than what you would think that have kosher symbols that, that are easy and accessible to find but again when you go to like a really far out place especially in a different country um, there's definitely value in really asking and like finding out from the local rabbis the local you know jewish people if there's anyone even remotely in the area at all like even in the same country you know just to give you an idea of what brands what kind of items would be kosher even yeah. without a symbol playing with the baby <laughs> and with that we're gonna wrap up this q a okay i hope we satisfied your curiosity if you have any more questions you could always reach out to nechama as a quick overview let me give you a few main tips to keep in mind when traveling and keeping kosher number one bring what's necessary from home including some kind of pizza maker toaster oven some pots and pans whatever you think you may need number two shop in your local walmart for everything else number three have a rabbi available to text or call if something comes up you'll definitely come across some questions that you'll want to have someone knowledgeable on hand to reach out to. Number four, grill, grill, grill. Yummy barbecues are the way to go. They are simple, easy, and require you only dirty the grill that you brought along. It's great for Shabbos as well. And number five is get creative with your meals. I found it really fun that at Walmart, I was just exploring and using that opportunity to try foods that I wouldn't necessarily eat, either because they're not healthy or just because they were not in my comfort zone or in my regular routine. So have fun with it and I hope that this was helpful if you do keep kosher and you're going on vacation or if this was just for your interest and leave us a comment to let us know what your favorite places to travel to, what you do for kosher food, and any of your thoughts and feedback below. I love you all.